Hello, and welcome to Cursed Content Club, the only club where we stab ourselves with knives. Uh, I'm your host, Mr. Feel. With me, as always, are Dan and Babom Video Games from Gigaboots.com. It's me, Dan Video Games, and my brother, Bob. The Yahoo! <laughs> and KZ Excellent, I don't care enough to think up a second name. <laughs> Hello, Mario. <laughs> Uh, we are watching inexplicably as the result of a fucking <laughs> falling down a hole at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, in a side tube and just putting fucking stupid shit we could find into it. it, it it's like a train of thought and you can't where you like, how did I get to here from there? <laughs> oh, well, basically, uh, but we are watching YouTube Magnum Opus with over 20 million views. Mario Warfare. And it's worth noting. It has 20 million views on this, the complete saga version. The original upload of episode one, part one, which came out a little over eight years ago, has 11.5 million views. This is dangerous. <laughs> this is one of those times where I'm like, what are we doing this week, guys? <laughs> and then I look over at our schedule spreadsheet. I see a thing in there. It's a cursed content club. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. It's not a real movie. But they seem real enthusiastic about it, which means those are the most dangerous episodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. Agreed. <laughs> Any movie that premiered on YouTube has that extra level of fear. And yet it has that hard edge we need. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like when you found Virtual Vendetta. It's like isolation one one nine, where you're very very excited about it, and I know nothing, uh, and I, I'm not I'm not ready. You ready? Oh uh, well, Casey, you'll you'll you eventually you'll love isolation one one nine, considering we're doing an episode on it every year until we die. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I do like it, <laughs> except for like one scene that's eighteen minutes long. <laughs> okay, we we okay, we have to get this. We gotta get out in front of this and. and Put in our votes now. Will this be better or worse than Virtual Vendetta? KZ, what go. did that get? I don't remember what we what we gave that because who, who, who gives who gives a shit about numbers? Go with your heart. Do you think you will enjoy this more or less than Virtual Vendetta? Uh, uh yes. My prediction is at least a three. <laughs> Dan, there's something to be said for something that flies so much closer to the sun of being a real movie, and that will exacerbate certain issues. But I Will do it have believe an effect better than Sweet Tooth. Yes, I can already <laughs> confirm that. I do believe this will be better than Virtual Vendetta, and look like it costs three hundred times as much. Right, <laughs> Bob? Is, is, do you have the same take? Yeah, I think this will be better. I don't think Cortana will be in this, so I'll be better <laughs> just in that merit. It's oh, a great <laughs> gif. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Will that be something that you can put in your stream boss gif overlay? Who knows? Maybe Daisy does a dance like that, and then this is a 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, it's time for your pegging session. No! I also think this will be better than Virtual Vendetta. <laughs> no. And I... Uh, Yes. Feel. Do you think that this, just like Virtual Vendetta, the director will get drunk and watch our episode about it? <laughs> Ooh. Maybe. <laughs> See, it's a coupled statement. Will he get drunk and? And that's where I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I'm assuming they're too big, they'll just never hear about us. Oh. Yeah, it depends how much they've fallen out of fame after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that is like really what it's based on i mean given that they're like a cool live action cosplay channel i imagine they've had a rough year plus oh yeah yeah so, so they might just be drunk at home being like the fucking what's what's this what's this thing with my thing in it my google trends warning went off <laughs> who's watching this and why <laughs> what what happened uh why are they referencing it alongside someone who made mk roomies because MK Rumi's is great. You know, we're gonna watch a few episodes for this. Yeah, we need to do that. <laughs> if we have any more uh, prim uh, predictions about expectations about this. Okay, I have one expectation, and I haven't seen it yet, but I really need this. 
I need the world's worst. We did a really zoomed in shot and we're pretending you broke someone's neck. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. They cut to a wide shot where he grabs the guy's head, then a really zoomed in shot where the guy's clearly now looking to the left, but they're pretending he's still looking straight forward, and then he just turns his head to the right, and they go... I, I need Dutch <laughs> angles and fisheye lenses like the golden compass. Shut the fuck up. Never, never don't, don't mention that golden, golden, golden compass ever again. <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I guess we have to go watch this movie. <laughs> and if you'd like to watch it with us, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast. For as little as $5 a month, you get many benefits, such as early access to Mondo Cool and Chugging Bleach, our two anime review podcasts, extended armchair dev pitches where we explain our vile ideas more thoroughly, and extended co Cursed Content Club commentary tracks, as well as Cursed Content by Committee, our Patreon-exclusive User voted cursed content show. That's patreon.com slash GB podcast. Well, let's go watch the move movie? The series compendium. Bye. <laughs> Bye. We're back. Mario Warfare is the prequel to Super Mario Brothers, the NES game. In this epic miniseries turned epic film, lots of scenes from movies you know happen, but with Nintendo characters in them. Somehow it works. Better than a Channel Awesome movie, at least. So Dan, what did you think of Mario Warfare, and is it better than Virtual Vendetta? They certainly had access to a lot more resources than Virtual Vendetta. And while I sit here and think it is better, it does suffer from some of the same problems. At the same time, I'm not going to say this is cursed. I definitely expected two-thirds of this movie to be bullshit filler. But it's all thrill, no fill. I'm going to go ahead and give this film... On a curse content negative to five, negative five to five scale, I'm gonna give it a four. Ooh, that's high. Uh, KZ. Yeah, this was <laughs> immediate. Immediately, you are assaulted by what this movie is going to do. Uh, it's budget and not budget at the same time. I had a very good time with this. Uh, some sequences were insane. Um. And the incredibly stupid thing it does at the end uh, pushed it just just hard enough where I'm like, I'll give this a uh, four. A four. Vibes reserved ah. for, the mo for the most delightful things. Where I'm like, this is great. I want to watch it again. This, I don't necessarily. Bob, this is getting very high. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's generally pretty enjoyable. It's lots of fairly good choreography. It's like a fun little thing. Um, I can't say I'd really enjoy watching it again, though. Uh, in some, there are some real, real big groaners. I'll give it a three. Uh, well, I'm also gonna give this a three. Uh, I yeah, I couldn't imagine watching this again. Uh, I, I thought it dragged in parts even the first time. So the second time, I'd just be like, mm, "That scene again, huh?" <laughs> it was it was okay the first time, but the second time. Maybe, maybe not you, so uh, much. Uh, you know when people take, like, Miku Miku dance animations and apply that to different, like, 3D models? Well, this is the Nintendo equivalent of um, that for choreography and fight scenes and movies. You just put a Nintendo skin on it, and uh, you got some cool Mario doing the thing from Equilibrium and Toad doing that. I mean, that's why you, you can't... I can't watch it again. I need it to be another repurposed with another different set of True. Cosplays. They're just gonna have to do this again for Sonic and Sega IPs. <sighs> oh, that'd be... Look, all you'd have to do to make a Sega version of this, like, hit a 10 is just play the Sega vocal songs over... the Sonic vocal songs on every single... over every line. Oh my god. Ultra claimed. <laughs> so is Toad uh, SPO? <laughs> Bullet Bill gets to be the crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a traitor. <laughs>
I see Vector. I don't trust him. Vector's so cool, though. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Just like Bullet Bill's too cool in this. <laughs> Now my brain's cursed. I'm just thinking about who to replace these people. <laughs> we we need to get we need to get to the yeah. bit. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Let's get through the segments. <gasps> Holy shit, <laughs> Dan, take 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 your win. Well, who's who's your favorite character? Uh, Waluigi's incredible. His outfit's incredible. His <laughs> acting's incredible. His choreography's incredible. He knocked it out of the park. Of this, you know, Toad was really good, and Toad. Would have gotten it, but Waluigi's in one fight scene, and he owns the film. If you ask me, you know, maybe Toad would have done better if Toad didn't have the lamest neck break in the entire that you could have possibly thought. Look, in cinema a, history, really, he's a practical killer. Okay, he understood the physics of breaking a throat. I'm gonna sit over here. I'm gonna stand, Waluigi. This is great. All I'm saying is, Shebe Weeby's gonna be thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> Bob. I'm going to pick Toad. He had the second best fight scenes. Uh, it really shows that these two were the choreography directors. <laughs> In a movie mostly about fight scenes. That's, uh, yeah, they kind of sing. Oh, man. There's enough scenes of Toad just being equal equilibrium man. Oh, yeah. Uh, that he, Obviously, he's the best pick. It's so good because they're just like, <laughs> we're going to do our best to just reproduce scenes straight from equilibrium. In this hotel lobby. And, and they also had uh, the, the scene with him and the uh, the bombs, which is strong. <laughs> yes. yes. Especially yes. when they revisit it later. <laughs> yes. Especially when he has his awakening animation. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. What? That was good. It was really good. Hey, Z. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so... I don't want to pick this because I just keep thinking of Bullet Bill. <laughs> He's so good. He is strong. He's pretty Bullet good. Bill, especially for the shot when he dies. That <laughs> 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 uh, they show twice. Also, he has layers because you know he was originally a good guy, but then turned at some point. But they didn't give you all the answers to why he turned, which makes it really deep. I just yeah, I, it's true. I, I wish we got more of him in the movie. He's so delightful. <laughs> Those are the best characters. I thought there'd be multiple Billy Bills, honestly. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Just because okay, I could see why. Yeah, it's like that's something you see a lot of in Mario. Yeah, and <laughs> instead, instead it was Shy Guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I have to go. I have to go last, and I, I have to. I have to. I'm sorry. I have brain damage. I can't help it. <sighs> My favorite character is Diddy. I knew it. I was like, I can't take it from it's, him. It's super violence. Okay. Uh, you'll know why when best scene comes up. Yes, you will. You will... <laughs> Diddy Kong is my favorite character. You'll know later. Yeah. But, first, but first, we have to discuss who the worst character is. And Bob, who's the worst character? Um, I'm going to give it to Link. They only had one joke with them of calling him Zelda. They used it like three or four times. It was always bad. Mm -hmm. uh, also, he shows up in the beginning of the Smash Bros. scene. And the, it, it's kind of rough. Like, that's a, the movie has a down moment there. And I feel like he's part of the start of that. Well, and, and you know, honestly, he was going to be my pick, too. You look at the rest of the movie, he's sniping with like a sniper rifle. It's not really... You think it would be archery or something? Yeah, you a think bit they more could, Link could do something more Link-like with him. And then they also have that closeout scene where he clearly wasn't available for shooting with the rest of them, so he got to shoot an insert on a tripod with no other characters by himself. Yeah, and was, they dubbed in the joke for the scene. That was yeah, really what the bad. Fuck that was up with that. Uh, <laughs> that I just that, explained it. <laughs> that that he was not available to that, shoot with the rest I, of them. I clearly. guess. I guess that has to be it. Yeah, he flew back or whatever. And that's why they put a really heavy filter on the rest of the movie because the insert shots from then on out had different qualities because they didn't have the same camera. Uh, so they needed to filter it a shitload so that way you wouldn't, you know. Um. But yeah, no, he was definitely my pick too, Bob. I think that's the pick for worst character. I don't even know who you could be as disappointed by. <laughs> right. I'm sitting here and I'm like, Bob picked it. I'm objectively wrong no matter what crawls out of my mouth. <laughs> well, well, you have to be objectively wrong next to hand. So. 
Shit. No time to recover. Um. I'm gonna mull over what I think my next best is as a next worst. To make sure I don't say something and immediately regret it. Mm. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Um Donkey Kong. Really? Yes. There's there's very specific reasons, okay? Okay. The way his mouth yes, moves. Please tell me. <laughs> One, the mouth thing's funny, but I could tolerate that. I think his dubbed over voice is really bad. And I he, don't it is. think it is impressively bad. I think if you're gonna have people jump around in ape costumes, maybe make some Planet of the Ape dub sort of jokes, like some sort of voice that fits that the better face makeup to close like let's put it this way okay mystery science theater doesn't have a lot of budget and when their ape man back in 1990 is blowing the shit out of yours in 2012 <laughs> for your high-end cosplay movie that's kind of rough yeah the, the the costume's really rough for me the only thing that gives him the boost is that first fight scene was peach uh he does a lot of like silly monkey moves yeah <laughs> which helps yeah and he stabs a person to death with a banana in the eye and those are really the highlights uh, yeah that, that was <laughs> yes. the most delighted i had heard feel the entire movie at the time <laughs> yeah the stabbing in the eye was like literally all i could want from donkey kong at that point but i i do think <laughs> donkey kong is one of the most disappointed i feel like we didn't really get enough of him built out in connections to other characters like, I really don't like the connection that's built between him and the main plot of the movie is really poorly done and overwrought and not as delightful as the rest of the film. And it also leads to the scene where it's like the king used to look like Altier and was cool as shit. Yes. <laughs> Which is now funny. That's all blart. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, if he, if he just had a better vocal performance and a better ape outfit and we got another scene as good as the, uh, the fight with him at the very beginning at his entrance to the film that would have been good but i think the training montage is really weak yeah. i think the jokes in it are really really weak um i don't know the part where he takes the banana out of the peel that that is the one good joke yes like if we're talking best jokes with dk it's that and stabbing someone in the eye with the banana but yeah aside from that i'm i'm overall pretty disappointed in dk I, I think of the entire cast, that's the person. You know who would have taken this if not for that? Who? Uh, they get a redemption arc, though, so I couldn't have picked them. Luigi? Okay, fair. Yeah, but they get a redemption arc. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I have to go next. I'm going to go for p the King of the Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, I, I really don't know why they didn't just... Just, just fucking... Have have him be Altair in the present day too. What? No, he he needs to be a mattress salesman. What's wrong with <laughs> just ha just have have him be mysterious? Have him have the hood up so you never really see his face and be like, I'm gonna go sacrifice myself while my daughter escapes instead of being Paul Blart. Be like, ah, oh, I, I need ice cream so I don't fall asleep and then die. But see, here's the cool thing about him, right? He kind of resembles the kings in Mario Three that you return to their original forms. Like some of them were just slubby, unremarkable people, and there's some. There's honestly, I, I there's an energy to him being the the king that I appreciate in a way that's maybe not genuine. I, <laughs> it's just like I'm your dad, the mattress salesman. <laughs> you kind of escape, Princess Peach. I kind of really, I really adored that when I came into this film. If they my beautiful fully... mid thirties daughter. If they fully committed and had the, that slubby dude do a fight scene, I would be 100% sold. I would have screamed. <laughs> yes. He would have gotten best character if he just started King of Iron Fisting these motherfuckers. <laughs> and then is killed by Wario. I would have been okay with them if they had given him an insane looking crown from the, like, the king had in the old Mario Brothers comic. So I'm going to post a picture up for you guys to see his insane mushroom head. I want to see his insane mushroom head. Okay. If he had that thing on his head. It's like a turban. <laughs> I love Mario's face in this panel. He's just like, I, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm out. I, I, that, that, that picture of Mario is going to become an emote for our Discord. <laughs> yeah, I knew it as soon as I... <laughs> God. Casey, who's the worst character? Uh, Wario. 
Yeah. <laughs> he is pretty. Uh, he, he is really he, disappointing. Uh, <laughs> hit, hit one. He's very unwario like. But even if you ignore that, his action scene was incredibly lame. And then they cut away from it to a an incredible action scene that's so much better than that with Waluigi. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'd say there's not much else to say. It's just he's hey, only in one look, scene, and the scene's not very good. I think he started yeah. making a little bit of a comeback where towards the latter half of his action scenes, he started just going, wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, wah yeah. as he punches someone in the face. Yeah. I need to stop staring at this Mario face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you should. Okay, time for me to take my God-given right to go first for best scene. Uh, so there's a scene where um, where K. Rule traps a uh, K. Rule being a uh, uh just a completely normal commando man with a lizard mask. Mm-hmm. God, where uh, different where than K. the Rool, other ones, he has a beret. Yeah, he has a beret. Imagine like Rolinto with a lizard mask. Uh, he has Donkey Kong captured in a chain chomp bear trap and is going to kill him. And he's like dual wielding machetes. And, and Donkey Kong's like, the child I raised, I've always kept nearby. And then Diddy Kong comes out of the barrel Donkey Kong had spent the entire movie carrying. Uh, and after a brief fight scene, he just rips K. Rool's arms off. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. And then they, and they cut to his nubs. Yeah, they cut to him waving his nubs that are like splurting Quentin Tarantino-esque jets of blood. And it was killing me. I'm like, well, man, why couldn't every fight scene have something like this? And then he gets, he gets like his head chopped off with his own arms. Yeah, it's, it's a great scene. <laughs> hey, Z, what is the second best scene? Because obviously what I just said is the best scene. <laughs> <laughs> what it's, it's just it's not up for debate at all. Correct. This is the dude who just said God given right to go first when it's his show and he gets to decide that. I think you, I think you know how it works in his head. <laughs> hmm, there, there there's a few there's a few scenes I like, but I think I'll go with the um the fight between Toad and Bullet Bill. Thought that was pretty good. Like the That's entire a good like, one. To- yeah, the Toad sequence all the way up to that. It's really impressive. And then the fucking bombs. God, the bombs, which only becomes better when when they show the twist later in the, the film. Twi- the twist is really good. <laughs> I thought that that was thought that was really good. I was between that and uh, some of the Fight Club stuff, which was very good. Bob, I'm just gonna cheat and use that Waluigi scene we've talked about already. Thank you. You <laughs> freed me for my choice. You made it so much easier. Go. <laughs> Yeah, it's Mario fighting Waluigi. They have a very cool set they found where it's a bunch of pipes stuck in the ground and they mm-hmm, start fighting yeah. each other with different sizes of pipes. Like Waluigi pulls off a tiny pipe and Mario is able to lift a gigantic pipe that seems unreasonable because they made Mario a superhero in this movie. <laughs> a bunch of them <laughs> fall down on Waluigi. <laughs> yes. It, yeah, it, it's real good. It's, it's, I just remembered how he dies. Mm-hmm. It's very uh, I, strong. I, I don't. I don't want to talk really about fe- it. It really feels like because the, the actor for Waluigi was like the head of choreography. He's like, I'm gonna be in the best scene. No one else can actually do this. I'm only in one scene. It's good. It's gonna be the best scene. Dan, you've been free to your choice. So what is your your new choice? One moment. Have to look up uh, an exact thing. <laughs> So in the final real chapter of Metal Gear Solid 4, there's a moment where Meryl and Johnny Sakaki are being attacked by uh, the enemy. So they do a duet together fight scene where they reload guns for each other. For some reason, that was in the middle of this film, and it's pretty good because it's from Metal Gear Solid 4's cutscenes, which are good. The, the plot really isn't, but yeah, so that was good. I like Metal Gear Solid 4's cutscenes, so cool. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> valid, I guess. <laughs> Very valid. Uh, not, just uh, not as valid considering what happened immediately after that made me black out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember any of it. Dan is not posted it because I don't remember at all. Fox Snake Kojima hates you all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's with the name of the YouTube video. I just timestamped the cutscene where if you watch it play out, you don't have to do this during the video. This is more for you later. 
you will uh, see some of the choreography bits they took. It's really good. I appreciate well, it. It, it. It kills me what happened right after that, but... <laughs> yeah, custom, what, what's a candidate for worst scene? <laughs> well, let's see if anybody picks it. KZ, you get to go first for worst scene. Worst scene. Uh, I don't think there's a large amount here that I can pick from. It's not like... It's not like the fucking supermarket. Um, the really dumb conflict scene of Luigi going, uh, I'm a cripple now. <laughs> you need to bring me to the battle with you. And he just gets left behind. And I'm like, you know, if someone came in during this scene, they wouldn't know the lores that his testicles were hammered over and over again in a warehouse <laughs> by the hammer bros. Yeah. Do you think that like, the person who played Luigi just loved that bit and wanted it to be in the movie. It's it's so weird and out of place for the rest of it. I, I was like back and forth on the fucking hurt in his balls thing until the end when they're like, he got Pokeball testicles. I'm like, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. It's one of those jokes that you see coming and, and then get up and get upset at by, but by the time it actually arrives, you're okay with it. It's kind of funny. <laughs> the fact that they went and they put them inside and you're like, Wait, why is he awake during surgery? <laughs> yes. God, what a fucking movie. Uh, I guess I fucking have to go second. Uh, I, we already discussed the horrible Link scene, so I'm not going to pick them. Any of them. <gasps> okay. Because they're all so bad. I'm going to go with Kirby eating Pikachu and getting lightning powers. <laughs> I think Kirby being here at all, I forgot I would have made that worse character. He all, all the all the non-Mario and King Nintendo characters are pretty fucking superfluous. It's fine. It's fine. We got excited when Captain N appeared. I I I really ex I, I got deathly afraid, fuck fucking deathly afraid when Captain N showed up, Casey, because I thought this was going to turn into a very different thing. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm com I'm completely fine with what happened but it could have gone somewhere dark describe it, it <laughs> Captain in a lot of Captain in fans like saw it when they were four or five and thought it was the coolest thing in the world so you get a lot of energy of like people who like Shadow the Hedgehog a lot but like Captain in so when he shows up I get so scared so like Captain in says hey Mario nice cock more like it's it's suddenly an edgy Captain N movie. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would have been pretty cool. <laughs> Did I say a scene? No, I didn't. I was in, in the process of saying a scene. I got fucking derailed. <laughs> like Hazy talking about Captain. Oh, yes, I did. A, a Kirby eating Pikachu. Okay, Dan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, now we go. So there's a scene where Solid Snake appears to just say the plot of the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Yeah, yeah that's I don't my, remember a single bit of it. That's that's my least favorite scene because it's ham fisted into this. It really didn't. I know I like how his they make voice a lot. It was really, really overbearing. Yeah, I think it was. I, I think I was closer in the intro to the Castle Caliostro Cal episode of Wee Boomers than. Yeah, I don't think you've ever done a salt snake that bad. Yeah, like that's, it's, that's fair. <laughs> um, it was really rough. And it kept going. Kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> Good job, Phil. You nailed it. Uh, <laughs> I can't relate. I watched a different dub. Uh, but yeah, this is... um, Yeah, it's uh, completely unnecessary. I know how they think it plugged into the plot and well led into the next scene, but it was the most... um. I already forgot the name of the other fed film film we watched. Oh no. Because Virtual they, Vendetta. Thank you. Because they changed the name halfway through development and the other name's better, but I know why they couldn't use it. Anyways, Virtual Vendetta. Yeah, it's the most Virtual Vendetta bad scene in this. Where it's just like, we've ham-fisted this character in because we didn't know how to integrate them. I hear Xbox people love this guy. <laughs> 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 um... Man, it's really sad we didn't get a scene of, like, Mario and Kirby and Captain Ann all grabbing the Master Sword to push it down through Bowser. Okay, that actually <laughs> would have been hilarious. Yes. <laughs> they just shove it into his head like fucking uh, Wind Waker. <laughs> yeah, the ending of this movie could have been a lot, a lot better. 
<laughs> and then we made sure Bowser would never come off by sawing and come back by sawing off his arms and legs. <laughs> Bob, what's the worst scene? Um, there's this scene where Princess Peach has the backstory of Donkey Kong explained to her of Fireside, and it looks like she's cracking up the whole time. Oh, she's absolutely. <laughs> yeah. She has, she was, it, it took me back to us doing live action sketch comedy because she's just not holding character at all. Like, she cannot manage the, the fact that she has to look at a monkey suit man. This yeah. Block. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's she's really, she's really, she, like, she can't she, cope. She's, uh, she's Jimmy Kimmeling it. Yes, she is. <laughs> I thought was that was more a Jimmy Fallon thing. Yeah, it was Jimmy Fallon. I got them mixed up. It's because it's they both have fucking night nighttime shows now. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's Jimmy Falloning in it, where she's just like, "I'm gonna look right at the camera, and and like my face is visibly trying not to laugh." <laughs> can we get another take? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could be like, "Come on, come on, just just give her a minute." <laughs> You're making this big. For ostensibly serious movie. Come on. Also, the uh, the whole th plot there, and the fact that the first time Donkey Kong's really talking is really bad. <laughs> yeah, and also how it's shot is really bad. It's just one wide shot by the fire. Yes, and it looks like shit. And on top of that, yeah, nah, th there are a lot of problems with that scene. Okay, it's it's time for a, a special segment only for this review that I have to ask Dan right now because I'm curious. God damn. Dan, hmm. out of the amateur things, we, amateur film projects we've watched, how does this compare in terms of shot composition? Um, this is probably at the top. Um, it's clear they were able to use the cameras they wanted and lenses that were worth anything, which puts them completely out of league with almost everything else. The people who made Isolation 119, Lumilin Films, they didn't have DSLRs with nice lenses. Uh, I feel like the virtual vendetta guy, of course, had some lenses. I wasn't un I wasn't under the impression at any point that he had like a gigantic kit or anything. Um, but it didn't look like. Yeah, this this definitely is up there when it's shot composition stuff. It's definitely easier when you're just wholesale stealing scenes and shots individually from action movies. Um but this was really well put together in that sense. Uh, it's it's unfortunate that this exists in the 2012 zone. So the quality of cameras and the quality of good color grading and everything else uh, make it incredibly noisy and shitty looking, actually. But, you know, that's it, it did really well for a fan project around then. Good to know. I really was curious. Like, I don't fucking have an eye for this shit. I'm blind, deaf, and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slowly everything I know is from Dan saying oh that's wrong during one of these commentaries <laughs> <laughs> which got really aggressive at the start <laughs> yawn at clouds <laughs> feels like oh this house looks like shit and I'm like this shot looks like shit and then we handshake like predator <laughs> <laughs> And then, then Casey Pops are going, I don't know what Predator is. <laughs> What's a handshake? I don't get this. <laughs> Who's Steve Jobs? This is the weirdest Cult art wrestle I've ever seen. <laughs> Culture is a mystery to me. <laughs> Does anybody have any final thoughts on... Uh, I almost said Virtual Vendetta. On <laughs> Mario Warfare. I cannot believe you. you make this Mario movie. This Nintendo movie. You do super violent, awful looking Bowser. And you're like, how do we end this? Uh, make it secretly a prequel to the game and say to be continued in Super Mario Bros. on the Nintendo. It's actually Kano. Yeah, it's fantastic. It is wonderful. It brings it all, it brings it all together. This awful Mario is here to this very day getting ready to be in a golf game. <laughs> the first time he meets Diddy again at like Mario Kart he's like man remember when you ripped that guy's arms off <laughs> <laughs> the pipe just gives amnesia <laughs> Waluigi is like I'm glad I recovered from being impaled that one time <laughs> I uh 
I know the next fan project we watch on Cursed Content will not be as high rent as this. There's almost no chance. Right. This seems yeah. absurdly high rent. So my hopes for that one is there's more dialogue that's funny. Because I think if this one doesn't under if it un under delivers in any specific way, it's that the writing is not particularly funny or good, but the choreography and everything else lo looks pretty great. I really can't complain all that much. Yeah. So so hopefully we end up with good writing and not just a lot of writing. <laughs> <laughs> they they had two jokes they just kept going back to and it's like, well. <laughs> Luigi's balls have a certain charm, but that Link <laughs> joke is real bad. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm good. <laughs> Bob's like, I'll pass. Yeah, fucking poke balls. God damn I don't want to think about that. Let's okay, not pretend the end of this movie is Every happened. time that Pikachu <laughs> fucked someone up, I was happy. Yeah, that was a, that, those were pretty good scenes. That was probably the only like crossover character that wasn't just really bad and shouldn't have been there. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's another episode of Cursed Content Club. Uh, hopefully, ne we'll we'll see you next time when we watch something that'll probably be worse than this, considering the the curve of what we watch. This month's Giga Boots executive producers are Esme, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze Twenty Seven. Brendan O'Sullivan, Dobo Muito Real, Ace Gundam Pilot Adam Admar, Cooper Tank, Zilter, and Virmvar. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these gamers. If you want to be a gamer or ascend to God Kinghood, then head on over to Patreon.com/Gigaboots today.